So if you're selling a house and the buyer pulls out of the deal prematurely, you get to keep the earnest money, right? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Benj Foreman and I'm a realtor here in Boise, Idaho. And in this video, I want to talk about when the seller gets to keep the buyer's earnest money. Be sure to stick around to the end where I'll give you, the seller, a power tip to help reduce the chances that you'll have to refund the buyer's earnest money in the event that the entire deal just explodes which can happen. Now, if you're new to the whole home buying process, I actually made a whole video on that and you can check that out in the link right up above here. When you submit an offer on a home, you will submit a sum of money that is called earnest money. And what that money does is it shows the seller that you, the buyer, are genuinely interested in purchasing the property. Now there's no law in Idaho that says how much the earnest money has to be, but usually it's about 1% of the purchase price. Now the earnest money goes towards the buyer's upfront costs that he needs to close on the home. And generally speaking, that money is not refundable if the buyer pulls out of the deal for no good reason. But within a purchase and sale agreement, there are four contingencies that allow the buyer to withdraw his offer and get his money refunded back to him. The first is during the inspection period. Now, in Idaho, there's no law that says how long or how short the inspection contingency period needs to be. But I like to advise my clients to ask for six business days because that effectively gives the buyer eight days to decide whether or not he wants to buy the house. During that time, the buyer can withdraw his offer for no penalty and for, no, for any reason. So if the buyer doesn't like the color of the neighbor's house or the dogs next door or the smell inside the house or whatever the, whatever the reason might be, the buyer can withdraw his offer and he would get his earnest money given back to him. Number two, if the appraisal comes in too low, the buyer can pull out of the deal with no penalty and get his earnest money credited back to him. So an example that would be is if he put in an offer on a house for $200,000 and the appraiser appraised the house for $180,000, buyer can say, I don't wanna buy the house and the seller doesn't keep the buyer's earnest money. Three, if the title is not marketable, obviously the buyer can't purchase the house, so he can pull out of the deal and get his earnest money back. Now an example of, of a title not being marketable would be if there's a lien on the house. Say for example, a, an owner had some contract work done on his house, didn't pay the contractor. The contractor puts a lien on the house, well, that, the buyer doesn't want to buy a home that has a debt attached to it. So the buyer can pull out of the, out of the deal, withdraw his offer, and get his earnest money credited back to him. Another example of a non-marketable title could be uh, if there was a, a, a seller that was actually a co-owner of the property and the other owner didn't want to sell the property for one reason or another. Well, the buyer again can't purchase the home because both owners have to sign off on the sale of the property. So again, the buyer can pull out of the deal with no penalty. Finally, number four, and this is an important one. If the buyer's financial position has changed before the closing on the house, the buyer gets his earnest money back. If before the house closes, the buyer, for example, loses his job, well, the lender's not gonna want to give that buyer a mortgage, so the buyer's financing falls through and the buyer can't purchase the home. Well, a lot of sellers don't recognize this, but the seller actually has to give the buyer the earnest money back because the buyer's purchase of that home is contingent upon the buyer getting the proper financing for it. Now what that does is it raises the stakes when considering an offer made by a potential buyer. If you're a bit uncertain about that buyer's financial position, you may not want to accept that buyer's offer because if 30 days, 45 goes, uh, days uh, go by and you're pending and the day before closing the, buyer, the buyer's financing falls through, well, you, the seller, walk with nothing, buyer gets his earnest money back, and you're back to step one after being off of the market for 45 days. Okay, so here's my power tip. After the inspection contingency period, the most common reason why a deal falls apart 
is because the buyer loses his financing. So what you can do as a seller is you can ask for the buyer's earnest money to be non-refundable in the event that the buyer for some reason or another loses his financing. And what that does for you is it protects you, the seller, from getting all the way up until closing day and then finding out that the, that the buyer actually doesn't have the finances to purchase the home. And so at least you get some sort of a remuneration for the 30 or 45 days that your house has been pending and off of the market. And if the buyer hums and haws about that and says, well, I mean, I don't know if I can get a loan, then right off the bat, even before you accept the offer, even before you're in contract on that house, you'll have a good idea about how certain the buyer is that he'll get the proper financing to purchase your home. Well, I hope this video was useful and helpful. If it was, hit that little thumbs up button and smash the subscribe button down below as well. And as usual, if you do both of those things, I'll see you in the next one. Wonder, she loves me as she needs to know I love her.